Hello world, my name is Victor Engelmann and this is the second part of my tutorial on Linux kernel programming. In the first part we've downloaded the Linux source code, compiled it and booted this laptop with it. And in this second video I want to go into the topic of kernel uh, modules. Well, uh, for example, drivers are kernel modules and since the majority of code in the Linux uh, kernel is for drivers, I think yeah, kernel modules are an important topic. Okay, the first thing that you need when you want to write a kernel module are the headers for your kernel. And uh, yeah, most distributions um, don't install them by default, but they usually offer some package for you to install that contain these headers. On Manjaro, uh, this uh, package is named linux-headers and uh, when I try to install them it uh, gives me this list of options which headers to install. Um, but since I'm running on a self-compiled kernel here I don't even have that problem. When you have uh, compiled your kernel yourself, then you just have the headers. So I can just abort this. Um, on different distributions, this package might be named differently. It might be uh, kernel headers, or on the Raspberry Pi, it's called uh, Raspberry Pi Linux headers or something. So uh, yeah, just Google it, and uh, I'm sure you will find the name of your uh, headers package for your distribution. Let's write a little kernel module and uh, yeah the classic example is the hello world module and uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, this mostly comes from the Linux kernel module programming guide. So this is from uh, Peter J. Salzmann, Michael Burian and Uri Pomeranz. I've seen several tutorials on this topic which just blatantly copied the code and uh, didn't uh, credit them for that and uh, yeah, I think credit where credit is due. So. We start with a C file because kernel modules usually are written in C and a make file. I will load them in this nice little text editor called Kate that I use often. Um, okay. Now, how do we write a kernel module? Well, the first thing we need is we need to include the header file linux slash module.h. And then we basically need just to provide two functions. Uh, one function that is called when the module is loaded and one function that is called when the module is uh, unloaded or removed. So the first one must return an int and be marked with init. And we can name that whatever we want. So for example, init hello. And it's important, although it doesn't get any parameters. So normally I would just omit this void here, but um, the compiler options that are used for compiling this um, force you to put this void here. Okay, so let's just put that there. And when we return a zero, that means, okay, this module has successfully been loaded. So um, if anything goes wrong, you might return something else like uh, 
a status message that says, uh, I don't know, the device is busy or something. Okay. Then we also need a function that returns nothing, marked with exit. Um, this is almost already sufficient for a kernel module um, to avoid any conflicts with uh, the names. Like uh, if you had multiple modules with the same names, uh, that might cause problems. So you can mark these with static so that uh, these names are not exported and then yeah, you cannot have any collisions with these names. And now we need to incorporate two preprocessor macros, module init, with which we tell the, uh, the system which of these functions is our initialization function. which is our exit function. And then we need to um, also tell it the license because um, yeah, the, the kernel might uh, react differently to different uh, differently licensed modules. Like for example, uh, you could compile your uh, kernel with an option that uh, says, I only want uh, GPL licensed modules. Uh, I just don't allow anything else. And then, uh, yeah, the kernel would just refuse to load any modules that aren't GPL licensed. So, um, yeah, we need to tell the kernel about the license. Okay. Now this was, would already be a legal module, but it wouldn't do anything. So. Um, yeah, since this is a hello world module, uh, it makes sense to print a hello world. But uh, yeah, printf um, is a function that's defined in the glibc, and uh, kernel modules are not linked against the glibc. So we cannot use that, but uh, inside the kernel, we have an alternative uh, that's called print k as in kernel. Okay. And now let's compile this. Uh, compiling this module is quite easy. You only need to uh, tell the make system um, yeah, the, the name um, of this C file here, except that you replace the C with an O. Okay. Now that would be uh, not much code for a make file and uh, yeah, the thing is that um, this isn't actually the make file that we are using. So the make file that we are actually using is in lib module modules, then the name of your kernel, build. You see that um, here is a makefile in that directory and when we call make with dash c, it means that we actually want to run make in this directory. So then it will take this makefile and then we pass a variable m which we fill with our current working directory. 
uh, yeah, just to tell that make file to pull the um, this variable from that make file here. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So uh, yeah. Okay, and uh, this has now compiled the kernel module. Here's this hello world.ko as a kernel object. That is the kernel module. And now I can uh, load that module. Okay. And if I list all the loaded modules now, it's a pretty long list, but um, up here, the first entry, you can see that uh, the kernel now tells me that uh, Hello World is one of the modules that are currently loaded. And with rm mod Hello World, um, you can unload the module again. Um, notice that for the ins mod, I gave it the physical location of the of the file and for our m mod i gave it the name of the module here as it is uh, in this list but you might have noticed one thing when i uh, when i inserted this module there is no output here it doesn't say hello world although uh, I clearly uh, told it I want to print hello world. Now the thing about kernel modules is of course that they don't know in which context you will run them. So you might run them on an IoT device that doesn't even have a, a screen attached. So why would it try to, uh, to put any text on your screen? Um, the print K function isn't supposed to uh, put text on your screen, it uh, prints that text into the kernel log. Um, you can examine that with sudo dmask for display message. Okay, and up here there is our hello world. And if I If I remove the module again, then we have the goodbye world here and the hello world from, up, from before up there. Um, this kernel lock, at least this part of the kernel lock, runs on a ring buffer. That means you have these 16 kilobytes of buffer and uh, messages are just written into it. But when it overflows, then it just starts overwriting stuff from the start again. Okay, and with sudo dmessage dash c, you can clear the ring buffer. Now, uh, yeah, this stuff here that's uh, from my sudo command, so that's just new stuff in there. And with uh, dash s. Uh, some number you can uh, change the size of the ring buffer. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, like this, uh, you see that uh, you only have one .o file coming from one C file. If you want to uh, have multiple source files, uh, which of course is something that you normally do when you're programming. You, uh, your code uh, usually just spans multiple files. Then uh, you just give your module some name like foo here, and then you take that same name foo with dash objs for objects, and then you can list the 
object files that correspond to your source files uh, in this uh, entry for the list of uh, objects that go into this foo um, project. Of course, when you write a kernel module or a driver or something, you probably want it to be loaded every time your system starts. So uh, how do you do that? Um, well, it depends on your distribution a bit, um, because in system V in it, this was configurable. And uh, yeah, some different distributions just did it differently. So in system V distributions, uh, you might need to put an entry in a file like Etsy modules or in Etsy rc.modules or have a, a file in Etsy sysconfig modules and then something like uh, hello world dot modules or something. They would uh, be bash scripts that would be um, executed at uh, the system start. But uh, yeah, most distributions these days use system D in it. And with system D, there is luckily only one location where these things are. So you would create a file in Etsy modules load dot d let's call it hello world dot conf okay and in here you would just say i want hello world to be loaded at system start now the problem here is that um, this would load the module using the command mod probe so it would do sudo mod probe hello world okay and uh, yeah as you can see now um, it says it didn't find hello world because uh, it's not looking in the right location it wants that file it's looking for that file in this directory lib modules and then the name of your kernel so um, to solve that problem, you would copy your module to lib modules, then the name of your kernel. Okay. Now, if you try to mod probe now, it will still fail. Um, because modprobe also has some uh, um, cache of the modules that are in there. So uh, you first need to update that cache with sudo depmod-a. Okay, now if I sudo modprobe hello world, this has now worked. So. Here is my hello world. And I can unload that module again. So uh, yeah, let's just try if that works and uh, reboot this computer. Okay, the computer has now rebooted. So let's see See here we have the hello world and if I call lsmod
might not be the first this time. Let's sort the output. There, hello world. Of course, sometimes you need to pass parameters to a kernel module, just like you need to pass parameters to a program, because you don't want to hard code everything. Sometimes you need to make something configurable at runtime or so. And Linux comes with some uh, useful preprocessor macros. Um, module param. A name for your parameter, a type, and um, yeah, just put this to zero here for now. Um, I don't want to go into wha what this is right now. And if you want to, you can also give it a description. Make sure you have uh, only parm here, but param here. It's a bit confusing, but okay. So description. And we also need to reserve the memory for that. Uh, we can leave it like this. So without uh, setting the variable to some default value, but um, yeah, we should better uh, give it a default value because otherwise uh, uh, the module will cause problems, maybe crash if we uh, um, if we insert that module and not give it a, a value for that uh, parameter. Okay. can now insert it without um, a parameter. And yeah, here's one hello world because the default value was one, right? So normally we uh, print hello world once, but um, we can now also give it a parameter Now we have printed it three times. And when we want to automatically load this module now, um, you can then just, uh, in this configuration file, uh, just put the parameter uh, just the same. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Uh, if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe. And when you're watching these videos, please consider turning off your ad blocker. That would help me a lot. Um, yeah, next time I'm going to take this topic a bit further and uh, turn this kernel module into an actual driver for an external device. I think that's gonna be interesting, so uh, definitely don't miss that. And uh, until then, See you next time and goodbye world.